Welcome to the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, and today we'll talk about analyzing IoT data streams in the cloud with Azure Stream Analytics, and we have JS with us today. Hey, JS, how are Hi, you? Hi, I'm fine. Thanks for inviting so, me. What do you do for a living? I work for Stream Analytics. So, I'm a program manager in the big data team, working on analyzing data at uh, real-time speed. Awesome. So give us a one-on-one about Azure Stream Analytics. What is, it, what is it exactly, and what is it used for? Uh, sure. So basically, Azure Stream Analytics is a product to take decision on data when data is still in motion. Okay. So you don't have to wait the data to be stored somewhere and make a batch overnight and have to wait for any insight. You can analyze the data in real time and take action immediately. So when I say take action, it's like you can set some send some signal back to the device. Uh, for example, if you want to do predictive maintenance, uh, you can take the signal, detect anomaly, detect something out of band, and stop the machine before something bad happens. Okay. And you, do you analyze on, on signal data points, or actually can you analyze on, on windows of time? So you can use both. We can take every uh, individual single point, or we have a, a, nati a native concept of time window where you can uh, make some aggregations, so average, sum, or count, or very complex queries. And you can even uh, go back in your time and look what's the value in the next uh, past event in the one before, or give me some thing that is an aggregate of my last five minutes, last five hours, or last seven days even. Okay. Got it. And so uh, if I wanted to, let's imagine I'm working on an IoT project. I have an Azure IT Hub instance that has been deployed. Uh, what would it take for me to analyze data coming from these devices connected to IoT Hub with uh, Stream Analytics? So it just takes a few minutes to set up an Azure Stream Analytics job. Okay. Uh, you can do that uh, in the portal, directly connect to IoT Hub and start to make the query and see the output in Power BI. It just takes, okay. let's say, five minutes. Can you show us? Sure. Oh yeah, let's do it. Uh, so, first thing you need to do is to go to, to the portal and to create a new job. So I already have an empty job here. Uh, you can see there's no input, there's no output. So okay. let, let's. So that's a stream analytics job, right? So when I do create a resource, where do I find it? Oh, okay. In, uh, in there. Real quick, for, for people who've never touched it, it's interesting to see where so they find you it. So you create a new resource. Yeah. Uh, and here you have a. A search bar, it will be easier to search for it. So okay. you can say stream analytics job. Okay. So there's a little description here, and you, you can see IoT Hub is, uh, is uh, illustrated here. Mm -hmm. And you click here on create. Okay. Uh, you just give a name, so let's call it uh, IoT Talk. Uh, just select one of my subscriptions. One of many yeah. subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> In real life, people don't have that many subscriptions, but because we work here... We, we have yeah. to look at a lot of different yes. things. <laughs> yeah. So and here, I just have to say which data center, so I can take uh, one closer okay. to me. Uh, but we yeah, are in like 26 data centers now, so you, you can choose the one that closes to, to your IIT, okay. IoT Hub. We are co-located with IoT Hub, so it's easier for Got you. Got it. So you can actually m make sure that all your past services are in the same place, that way you optimize yeah, on latency. You decrease well. latency between your services. Makes sense. Uh, and then uh, I just create it here. It does all the hard work, hard work for me and will appear in my okay. portal. Okay, got it. Okay. So now it's deployed. You can see it's created here. We just need to define some input and some output. Okay. Let's uh, do that. So you can use a portal to, uh, to create a new input. And you can choose between the reference data or streaming data. Okay. So the difference is streaming data is uh, the data in motion, uh, the data coming from your IT device, and mm -hmm. reference data is some list that evolved slowly, uh, some list okay. of reference, mapping between ID and name, specific threshold for every individual okay. device. Le less dynamic type of data. Yeah. Got it. So let's make a data stream, call it uh, IoT Hub. And you can select one of the three sources we, we support. Okay. So we select IoT Hub, and after, uh, you just need to uh, browse basically in your IoT uh, list. So I have okay. a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> so I have to. Uh, to use and, and what are you doing here in the portal? Um, I assume you can do that through APIs, right? So if I, if I want to programmatically set up my uh, stream analytics job, I could do that as well. Sure. Everything I'm doing here is available through okay. API, so it can be automated. Okay. Uh, so I'm creating this one. And you can also, uh, also choose the type of input, so it supports several types. Uh, in my case, I will 
statistics okay. in JSON. So that means you're, you have an expectation in terms of what the format of the data will be arriving from ITO, right? So yes, and that for the actual format of like the, the message itself, we mm. support Evro, CSV, and JSON. Okay. But after for the schema inside uh, this uh, envelope, it can be anything. Got we, it. We are a kind of schema-less service. We will be able to format message with data later when it arrives okay, to, makes to sense. the service. Cool. Uh, so I'm creating this input. And you can see I don't need to copy paste some kind of uh, connection string or anything. Just you, yeah. you use your credential and uh, yeah. automatically test the data and add my uh, yeah. input here. So that's all it took for you to connect Stream Analytics, the service, to IoT Hub. Yeah. And start from now, from now on, actually, anytime there's going to be data flowing into IoT Hub from devices, the Stream Analytics job will be triggered and will be uh, working right. Exactly. Okay. So. But next step is then to define your query okay. and, uh, and see what kind of data I have. So first, maybe I can show you what kind of data I'm sending to, okay. to yeah, this. Yeah. So I did a very quick simulator with the uh, IoT Hub SDK, basically. Okay. And I'm just sending some random temperature around this value every like 260 milliseconds. Okay. Okay. You can say it's kind of very, very ho like uh, often. Maybe a lot of scenario. Uh, in a lot of scenario, you you may want to reduce the flow of data, make some okay. time window or something. Uh, so what I will do now is to, to go and I will edit my query directly in the portal. Mm -hmm. uh, I can also use Visual Studio, we have a plugin for that. Okay. Uh, but I can do it in the portal, we have full support of uh, sampling and testing. What kind of language do you use for writing a query? So it's a SQL language, it's derived okay. from T-SQL, but we extended it uh, with time window support and geospatial support. Okay, cool. So if you're used to data and, and SQL in general, the queries should feel very familiar. Yeah, so okay. business user or any people familiar with SQL can start right away. And you will, you will see like, uh, okay. how easy it is to start. Okay. No need of learning a new, new language. Uh, if you know SQL, you be, will be able to start in Got a few it. minutes. Okay. Okay. So what I can do is to, to look at what's coming here. So I can use here uh, this option to sample data from the input. Okay. Uh, so I will listen to the hub. Uh, and since it's a hub, I can even go in the past so I go one minute before, so I don't lose too much time. Okay. And I just listen to get 30 seconds of data, which will be a lot of data points since uh, I have like some kind of high frequency simulator. Oh yeah. I just click here. We will listen to the hub and get the data here in the portal, so we can kind of build a query. Get an uh, idea of how it looks like. Okay, got mm, it. So that we don't fly blind, so we can see exactly what we will do. Okay. So it's making the sample. To what's coming. Um, so. What is the difference I've been asked already between Stream Analytics and Function at a high level, right? Azure Functions mm. is one thing, Stream Analytics is a different one. What are the key differences between these two? So that's a very good question. So I would say that in most of the cases, uh, the big difference is Stream Analytics is, uh, is very good for stateful query okay. and Function for stateless query. Uh, so basically, if you want to trigger something, have uh, immediate action, mm -hmm. uh, Function is the best. They also have like long running function. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Stream Analytics, we have a very good way to manage time window. So you, you, you can have this aggregate on, uh, on the running windows f and you can compare time data mm -hmm. uh, from microsecond to seven days, basically. Wow, okay. Without having to care from your query about the memory, storage, whatever, it's just No, everything is stored in memory off. because we are talking about near real time. Yeah. So we don't store anything. We keep everything in memory uh, for low latency scenarios. Okay, awesome. And in addition to that, I mean, we help you to join different stream of data. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of things to optimize the way you can compare the time. For example, when you talk about IoT, mm -hmm. every device may have a different clock. Yeah. And when you send it to the cloud, sometimes there's a network delay. Mm. So how do you do when things arrive out of order in the cloud? If you don't have the right order, can you take the right decision? So we have a lot of options out of the box in the portal to reorder the events, to wait for later arrival. Uh, everything is out of the box. Okay. Uh, so you can imagine if you have to code that by yourself or how much logic you, you have to do. I and, imagine. And, yes. and then we have the SQL language on top of that mm -hmm. that let pretty much anyone uh, take advantage of all these features. Okay. Um, but during this time, so uh, we had the sample. Okay. Uh, and what I can do is just to start from like a simple query, select start, just to see what's coming. Yeah. And so select start just gives you everything. Uh, if you are familiar with SQL, it's like the command to just see what what's here. Oh, sorry. So I can just select everything from my uh, IoT hub. Mm -hmm. And I don't put any output for now. I just want to, to develop this query. And then I can click on test. So it's, it's testing on the data that you collected, correct? Yes. Okay, got it. And let me put 
that bigger here, sorry. And here I can see the data from my simulator. So you okay. can see I have a message ID, temp simulated, I have actually the temperature and uh, the time. Okay, and then you have the actual content of the message that is behind that. Okay. Yeah, so that's the content here, and here I have some okay. metadata, uh, which is like uh, when it arrives in IoT Hub, what's actually my, uh, my IoT Hub, like we have more metadata yeah. from the, the message metadata. Awesome. You so now, so yeah, you have the Streamlabis job that captures the data. You, would, you could eventually set up an average yeah, uh, you know, let's let's do let's that. Do for that. Example, so, right? for example, uh, I mean, it's a lot of data. Like it's like more than four times a second. Uh -huh. uh, so let's take this column temperature, mm -hmm. and just say I want to have like the average temperature. Uh huh. Uh, sorry, to copy paste didn't work. Uh, for temperature. And uh, w to to do that, you need to use our time windows, and our time windows are accessible with a group by function. Okay. So in SQL, if you are familiar with group by, that just group by different things. Mm -hmm. Here we extended it with this Windows function. Okay. And we have a few types of windows, but the most common one is sliding window. And uh, what we need to do is, let's just say we have a five second window, for example. Okay. And you can see, uh, if I don't make any typo here, uh, we have a, a right query. So what you right. can see here is like, if I make a typo or anything, uh, we have an inline code editor okay. that will write the error here and tell you that uh, something is not expected here. Awesome. And you were saying as well that you can actually do that in, v in VS Code? Uh, right. Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, okay. So yeah. in Visual Studio, you can actually de develop your query with the same reach editor as you have in the portal right now. Yeah, so you, you have that reach editor, plus you can actually test it and deploy okay. even offline. Okay. So when you have no internet connection for the testing and deploying, of course, when you get back to, mm -hmm. to your mm -hmm. connection. Okay. And cool. uh, so you can integrate with your ca code management system, uh, source management system. And awesome. Awesome. And in that same query, actually, you can also do several things, right? You don't have to do only oh, a single thing, right? Yeah, sure. You can make complex query. You can have different steps. Have the steps fit the other one. Have the various input, various output. I know some customer who you have like a, like a 20 page query equivalent yeah, yeah. here. Uh, you can make very complex logic. Yeah. And then, so you, you have the notion of input, you're doing things with data, and then you have the notion of output, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, in, in the IoT scenario, uh, something typical would be whether to store the result or whether to display it somewhere, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Exactly. We can, we can you, actually you can do that. Okay, do that let's do that. Probably, yeah. So you can, we can test the query I just did, just to be sure like it's expected result. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, like, averaging over five seconds, testing that uh, from our data, and you can see, uh, I have the average uh, here. Okay, awesome, easy. So, I mean, it's little, um, so, uh, simple, let's just add it, the time, so after we can represent the time series in a graph or something. Okay, okay. So you pick what kind of, that's interesting, because you, all, you can actually reformat the, the data you take data as an input, that as a flow of data, and then you want to have a different type of format where you have like a timestamp and just the average, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's what you're doing, okay. So now let's create an output just to uh, connect, for example, to a Power BI dashboard. Okay. And again, you will see I will do everything from the portal, no code necessary. Yeah. Uh, so I create an output here. So let's call it uh, IoT output. Um, I need to choose a thing here, so you can see there's many different outputs possible here. Okay. I will choose Power BI, but you can also store the data in some database, SQL DB, Cosmos DB, SQL Data Warehouse, okay. uh, for long-term storage, mm -hmm. or call an Azure function, we were just talking about that, so uh, we have native integration with them. So when you, you have some uh, alerts created after a time window or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you can just trigger an Azure function and, for example, uh, contact a machine to stop it or anything. Oh, okay. So you Got can it. have custom code yeah. there and do anything possible in your nice. function. like it. Uh, in our case, we can have uh, a Power BI output. Okay. Uh, it's, it's some new data set called Power BI uh, uh, streaming data set. Okay. So enabling fast refresh. So nice. for that, you need to connect with your account. Okay. I'm just doing that. Uh, hopefully with single sound on. Uh, that takes just a few seconds. Oh, I need my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, this should work too. Uh, nice. Security. Security first. <laughs> Agreed. That but the beauty is that you're actually connecting 
like through your account, your Azure subscription to the Power BI account that you're using, right? Exactly. Okay. And so you create a token uh, valid for three months. Uh, so the Azure Stream Analytics will be able to connect to, to your okay. account. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I have many workspaces there. I can choose one of them. Uh, so I will just use uh, my workspace here. Okay. I give a new name. So let's call it uh, IoT Hub Demo. Uh, I create a new table. So name. I can uh, call it Temperature. Okay. And here it is. I just create the connection again. Okay. Uh, so it will test it automatically. And it's available as output in my query. So I can just quickly edit my query just to be sure it goes to the right output. Here I have only one, so uh, it's not necessary, but if you have several uh, inputs, you can, an output, you can direct the uh, output message to the to output specific output. Want. Makes sense. So you can eventually, for example, do a select star and send everything to storage for longer term storage of data, then do an average and then set that, that average to a function or a power BI. Exactly. Actually, so uh, you dashboard. can do simple, simple routing or actually have like more complex analytics and send the data okay. to the right output. And, that, and the way you do that is like this. Just you select into uh, one of the output. And you can save it. And basically, that logic will be applied. OK. So uh, then everything is tested in the browser. What I'll do is actually start the job. Start the job, OK. Because until now, you were just testing and developing. Yeah. So you're not paying anything. Everything was free. And now you hit start, so now it yeah, starts and rolling then, and yeah. the job will be actually uh, you know, running for real. Yeah, so what it does is to, to provision uh, the node, the streaming node there. Okay. And it's a little like a standing query. Mm -hmm. It will start, run 24 hours a day until you stop it. Okay. And listen to this input nonstop. Okay. And uh, wait for triggering things. In my case, it triggers things every five seconds, but sometimes you can have like, a more complex query, of course. Okay. Uh, interesting things where uh, here is like, I can start now, but I can sort of also start in the past. Because while we were talking, actually, uh, I mean, we were actually sending some data to the cloud to IoT Hub. Got and it. IoT Hub has actually some retention policy. So uh -huh. I can actually start in the past my job. OK. And that's interesting when you want to debug. You try once, but you mm -hmm. don't lose this event. You can start again. And uh, even if you do some maintenance or something, you want to change the query, you Makes can stop sense. it. And edit your query and start the last time you stop the job. OK. So you never lose so any you events. never lose anything, potentially, yeah. Got so it. I can start, let's say, a uh, few minutes back, uh, like here. So I will already have some data to show. OK. And then you start. And as I uh, was mentioning, you will provision that uh, in our cloud. Okay. And uh, you don't have to, to worry about that. It's a job services. We will take care of all the updates, OS update, everything. Uh, ev every kind of feature update will also be rolled out automatically. Uh, okay. So nothing to do on your side. OK. And so then you go to Power BI, and magically, data will be there. Magically, yeah. <laughs> cool, awesome. You want to show us Power BI real quick or? Sure, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. And here you go in Power BI. So basically, we, we just have a streaming data set here. OK. And as so you, you did some preparation that we're not showing here. We oh. said it was magic, but you did some preparation. It was about hooking up that dynamic that, that data set, the streaming data set, into your dashboard, right? Yes, it, yeah. it's basically 10 clicks, but it took a few minutes just uh, okay. to probe BI to, to discover the new streaming data set. Yeah. Yeah. But after it's live update, as you can see. Okay. Yeah. And immediately when you start, because I started in the past, I had five minutes of data, I have already a graph, like here. Mm -hmm. And you can see now I have this data, and I only average every five seconds. And it's much nicer as you have less data points. So in, in, in case you have too many, uh, too many data points, you can easy, easily filter with uh, Stream Analytics. Awesome. And here I show only one device, but you can imagine that running on a thousand of devices and things like this. Cool. So filtering may be even more important. Awesome. Well, thanks, JS. So we saw that it was like super simple actually to attach a, uh, a Stream Analytics job to a stream of data coming from IoT devices, do some treatment on that data, and then display on, on Power BI. So obviously, there's way more powerful things you can do with that, but that was a great introduction. Thanks, JS. Thanks.